and welcome to The Peace of Persistence. I'm Abigail Wright, and this is Blake Robinson. I've traveled to Connecticut to talk with him today. And I actually met Blake as an actor when I was looking for an incredible photographer to do headshot photos, and I found one. Since then, I've had the pleasure of being able to meet him and his wife, Marjorie, when they come into the city sometimes to see shows at the Metropolitan Opera or at Lincoln Center. And opera and ballet are just a couple of Blake's many cultural interests. He's a very well-rounded man and he comes from an incredible background. He began his successful career at a very early age with degrees from both Harvard and the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. And he's worked for 30 years in the investment management business, from working at a bank, to working at a large national investment management firm, to working as a partner in a small private firm. After retiring early, he began a professional photography business with his own studio, which you can find at blakerobinsonphotography.com, right? That's right. And he also has a lay ministry that he started where, at his church, he and others provide pastoral care for people who are in hospitals or in nursing homes. He also spends his time tutoring and mentoring a young college student from the country of Colombia, and he plays tennis in his spare time. <laughs> Blake, thank you so much for meeting with us today. It's really an honor to spend the time with you. Oh, well, thank you, Abby. Uh, we've been friends a long time, and it's a pleasure to um, spend this time with you. I look forward to it. Thanks. Um, Blake, from your schooling to your career in investment management, you've had a lot of early successes. What were some of your favorite things about your earlier career in finance? How did it enhance your life? I really enjoyed uh, the investment management business. Uh, it was a combination of uh, using some analytical skills in terms of studying companies, figuring out what investments to make, but also uh, working with clients. And I had a variety of different types of clients, both individuals, institutional clients, such as endowments and foundations. And uh, they were all different. So it was fun to have that personal interaction and try to do the best job I could for the clients. So you really enjoyed working with the people. I did, very much. And there was something new every day. Um, the markets were changing. Uh, our client situations were changing. So um, a lot of variety and a lot of, um, I had to kind of dance on my feet a little bit to keep up with uh, everything that was going on. Had you considered retiring early for a long while? Yes, I had. Um, you know, I reflect back on my father, who um, had a lot of good qualities, but he um, let his career um, consume him in many ways, and it, it hurt his some of his personal relationships. So maybe we try not to make the mistakes of our parents, um, but I knew there was a part of me that knew um, I wanted to do other things. So, and just uh, as a practical matter at our firm, we had to plan ahead for my leaving and bringing on another partner. Mm -hmm. um, when I retired, I did not have a clear idea of what I was going to do. I just knew that it was the right step for me. Mm -hmm. And if you had said to me uh, the day I retired, where well, you're going to open a photography studio and you're going to start a lay chaplain ministry and uh, you're going to be mentoring college kids, um, I would have scratched my head. Yeah. For me, I think a lot of it is being open to, um, I'm going to say voices, uh, that may sound strange, but be open to voices or messages that you get about the path that, that you might take. So you left a structured business world and now you have a lot of freedom with your time. How do you decide to use it? A few years ago, Abby, I took a workshop um, with the title something about setting your life goals. And the leader of this workshop said, write down on a piece of paper as quickly as you can without putting a lot of thought into it what your passions are, what you really care about, what your dreams are, what your bucket list is, who you care about. So we all furiously wrote stuff down on a piece of paper. Then he said, Take out your smartphone and write down all the things that you've done in the last two weeks and all the things you have planned for the next two weeks. And as I looked around the room, everybody's jaw dropped. They realized that what they were doing was not what they should be doing, what was right for them. So that was a bit of a wake-up call. So I 
try very hard uh, to be intentional about how I spend my time. Um, I'm in my 60s. Uh, there's a limited amount of time left ahead of me. Yeah, for all of us. And for all of us. Um, and um, so I, I pay attention to what I'm doing, who I'm spending time with, uh, what, what feeds me. And it's different every day. And I have, as we all do, things that will distract me, that drag me away from what really feeds me. But I, I try to work hard at that. Do you still have that bucket list? And um, is it shrinking or growing? That's a good question. Uh, I'm reminded of an article that was in the New York Times recently, written by David Brooks. And he talks about um, a resume bucket list and a eulogy bucket list. Mm -hmm. The resume bucket list, as Brooks describes it, is about all the things that we he strive for for success, promotions, and, uh, more money, and a bigger house, and a better car. Um, and those, uh, as he says, tend to be self-centered. The eulogy bucket list is about those things that people might say about us at our funeral. Was this a person who was connected to his community? Was this a person that showed compassion? Was this a person that loved other people and that tried to leave the world a better place? Yeah. So uh, that article really resonated with me, and uh, I guess my bucket list is to try to do what I can for other people, and that may sound preachy or sanctimonious, but it's um, really what inspires me. No, that's wonderful. So what about your personality or your outlook on life helps you to stay positive in that way? Abby, I think the, the main thing is a sense of gratitude. I've had so many blessings in my life uh, that um, actually each morning when I wake up before I get out of the bed, I just give thanks for one more day. Um, life is um, very, very precious, and um, I try to look on the positive side and just be grateful for my life, for my friends, for my health, and everything that um, goes on around me. So, Blake, do you have any advice for us? You know, I certainly don't want to hold myself out as an expert on any of this. Like all of your viewers, I'm struggling with a lot of the questions we've talked about today, and I haven't figured out all the answers for sure. Um, I guess some of the things I think about um, would be first to try to live a life of integrity, uh, integrity meaning wholeness, meaning being the same person to your family as you are to somebody you meet on the street as you are to yourself, uh, being a person that uh, is comfortable with their actions. So that would be one thing. Um, try to connect with other people as much as you can. Try to put the other person first. Um, love everybody you come in contact with between all the way from your family members to the woman that you buy coffee from in the morning, give her a big hello and how are you and really mean it. I think it's also important not to take yourself too seriously. Um, and we can kind of stress and agonize over some of the things we've talked about, but just let it go and be yourself and um, have fun and laugh at yourself when you can. For sure. So I wanted to share with you um, a short saying, or, or perhaps could be viewed as a prayer that um, I like, that I read quite often, that at least summarizes how I try to lead my life. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Well, you're certainly very good at that. <laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you, Abby. I, I work at it. I, um, it's um, something I strive to do. It shows. Blake, thank you so much for spending the time and talking with me today. I really appreciate the time to sit with you. Happy to do it, Abby. It's been a pleasure for me, and I'm really excited about your whole project on the piece of persistence. Uh, I think it's a 
really an exciting venture for you. Thank you. It, it means a lot to me, and I'm, I'm excited to see what you do next, too. Thank you for watching The Piece of Persistence. As always, like us on Facebook if you like what you see, share us with your friends, and subscribe if you want to find out how to find the balance between happiness and success in your life. But if we forget what really makes us sing and dance at night, it's the other people around and our dreams that lift us up.